Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have a really good example to show you why the hyperbolic functions are so relevant to the catenary. So here again we have a hanging cable. We were given the length of the cable to be 100 feet and the span to be 80 feet and we're asked for the sag. They did not give us anything else. They did not give us the weight per unit length. They did not give us the tension at the support points. And because of that, there's two things that are not known. Both the Y and the C are not known. Well, that is a bit of a problem because they are related to one another. The C is the distance from the bottom of the cable to the x-axis, and the Y is the distance from the x-axis to the support. And if both of those are not known, there's two unknown quantities, so technically we can't solve the problem. But we can solve it using an iterative process, and let me show you how we do that. Well, since we know that the length is 100 feet, then we know that the length of the cable from the bottom of the cable to one of the supports is 50 feet and x will be 40 feet if the span is 80 feet. We simply divide those two numbers by 2 to get s sub b and x sub b. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this equation right here. We're going to calculate the value for s for different values of c. We don't know the value for c and notice in this equation right here there's two places where we need to put c so we cannot just solve that equation for c. So what we're going to do is realize that the result is always going to have to be 50 feet. So we put in 50 feet so s equals 50 and then we're going to put in a value for c then we're going to calculate the corresponding c times the hyperbolic sine of x over c. And if we didn't pick the right c, we'll pick a different c, and eventually we'll see that it will converge to the correct value. So we know that we need to get 50. We're going to start out with, let's say, let c equal 100 and see what happens. So now what you do is you take this value right here, so you realize that this is equal to c times the hyperbolic sine of 40 over c since x sub b is already known. So we're going to take 40 divided by the value that we picked for c. We take the hyperbolic sign for that and then we multiply that times c and we get 41.08. So it looks like we didn't quite pick the right value. We probably want to pick a smaller value because the hyperbolic function, the hyperbolic sign of a small number since c is big, is not a very big number. So let's try c equals 50 and see what happens. So now we'll pick, put a 50 there and a 50 there. So we go 40 and we get 44.4. So that means we're getting closer to 50 but we're not quite there yet. So we know we're on the right path. So let's try the next value. Let's try 40 and see what we get. So that would be the hyperbolic sine of 1 times 40 and now we get 47.01. So again, we're getting closer and closer to 50. So now let's try our next value, 30. And now we get 52.95. So here's an indication that it's somewhere, C needs to be somewhere between 40 and 30. So um, let's try 35. And now we get 49.29. We're getting very close here. So we're not quite at 50 yet. So uh, let's see, we need to be a little bit smaller than 35 because 30 is bigger, 35 is smaller, so how about the 34? All right. And now we get 49.88, 49. actually 89. So we're getting really close, but not quite there yet. So maybe the next value you want to be a little smaller, how about 33.8, 33.8. Let's see what that does for us. And we get 50.01. And so that is getting really, really close. For all purpose, that's close enough. We could actually get a little bit closer if we wanted to. But I'm going to say that this is a good value for C that gives us all the right results for our particular cable. So now that we have the value for C, now we can find the value for Y. Because we know that Y is equal to C times the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. We're going to let c equal the value that we found, 33.8, and so y is equal to 33.8 times the hyperbolic cosine 
of 40 divided by 33.8. And let's see what we get. 40 divided by 33.8. Take the hyperbolic cosine and multiply times 33.8, and I get 60.36. So y is equal to 60.36, and this is indeed y at b. That's the full height. And so once we have that, and we have c, so c is equal to this value, now we can go and see what the sag is. The sag is y sub b minus c. So now we can find the sag, which is ultimately what we're looking for. So sag equals y sub b minus c, and y sub b is 60.36, c is 33.8, minus so 63.8, and we get 26. 0.56, and of course our units were in feet, so the sag is 26.56 feet, and that's pretty close to the actual answer. So that's how that's done. Now with the, uh, the catenary, with the hanging cable, if we don't know y and c, we have to find that iterative process. We have to find the value for c through plugging in values and then seeing what the corresponding value is until we get something that's close or equal to what we're looking for as being equal to 50. Once we have that, then we plug c into our other hyperbolic equation, y equals c times the hyperbolic cosine of x over c to get the value for y. And once we have the value for y, as well as the value for c, we can get the sag in the cable. And that's how it's done.